Good morning, class. My name is Pam Turner. I'll be the moderator for this morning's lecture. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Well, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses to top Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. 
The pattern consists of the most holy place, holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered under the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. Do you want to give me... Okay, we'll have a prayer by Dr. Lawrence Edwards. Uh, the scripture reading will be read, but um, I actually, I don't have the readers. I didn't look them up. I'm sorry. Who's the readers, please? <laughs> you guys could let me know. And then the scripture will be Acts, the third chapter. And we will also have a musical selection by Drs. Jennifer Marshall and Dr. Lisa Zizi. Good morning. Morning. Let us all bow our hearts and mind and give thanks to our Heavenly Father Yahweh for allowing us to come together once again on this Zoom. It's uh, it's getting worse out there, and we hope that Yahweh just uh, keeps us steadfast and keep up keep us with our arm on. Because those out there that don't know how, don't know what it is, they're still walking around, just walking and walking and walking. No mask, no protection, but we just know that Yahweh has us on this protective shield. We just we know that He's He's got us in the hollows of His hand, and He's keeping us steadfast. As long as we stay inside, keep your hands and your finger on them in the book, and remember that Yah Yahweh has done has done every, everything is done for a purpose, and His purpose has to has to be come to pass. With all these words and many more, that us all see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You took us off the mute, right, Chuck? You took me, yeah. Thanks. My soul, so strong. Thank you. 
that connection because I can barely hear. Mm -hmm. No wonder. Hallelujah. Thank you. That was beautiful. So the readers are um, Drs. Jennifer Marshall and Dr. Cynthia Smith. Would you like to read the scripture, Cynthia? Yeah, I can read it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm reading Acts, the third chapter from the King James Bible, inserting the proper name. Acts the third chapter. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the ninth hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. A certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked, and alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him what John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising Yahweh. And all the people saw him walking and praising Yahweh. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. 
And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or, ho or holiness, we have made this man to walk? The Elohim, the Elohim of Abraham and the Elohim of Isaac and of Jacob and the Elohim of your fathers had glorified his son, Yahshua, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the, but ye denied the Holy One and the just and desire a murder, murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of the life of, of whom Yahweh had raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name had made his, excuse me, has made this man strong whom ye and who ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now brethren, I would not through ignorance, ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which Yah had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that the Messiah should suffer, he had so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of Yahweh. And he shall send Yahshua the Messiah, which before was preached unto you, whom in heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which Yahweh had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall, the, shall Yahweh thy Elohim raise him un, up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me, he shall ye hear all the things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which is not, which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophet and of the covenant which Yahweh, or which Elohim made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, Yahweh having raised up the son Yahshua, raised up his son Yahshua, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That was Acts the third chapter. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to call for our first speaker this morning, uh, Dr. Carol Miller. Okay, <laughs> it's a surprise, I'm unmuted. Um, I just found this transcript. Uh, I was just going to read the first paragraph. I haven't read the whole thing. It's the renounced hidden things of dishonesty, but um, it was stuck in an older Bible of mine. So I'm just going to like read the first paragraph because I haven't gone beyond into depth into this. Um, so this is uh, Dr. Kinley speaking. And... Um, Wait a second. Yeah. Okay. Thank you ever so much. Now I know all of you enjoyed Dr. Hobbs and also Dr. Parker. 
And as they stand and testified, I thought pretty deeply about it. One thing I would say at this present time that is commendable for everybody present, and that is this. Now there was a time in our lives when we couldn't get out, most particularly if it looked like rain. You just couldn't make it. And anybody that would go out in the rain to go to a meeting there was something wrong with them. Well, there is something wrong with them. When you really get engrossed in this, like you properly should be, you see where, now what about you talking about it raining down water? What about fire? How would you like to go out in that? Yes, it did. Somebody say, well, I don't believe it. That don't, that didn't keep it from raining back there in the flood. So just your presence here, as many of you as are here, I tell you the truth, I feel indebted to you. And I think I ought to pay my bill. As Paul said, I am a debtor both to the Jew and to the Gentile. So Dr. Kinley is, to me anyway, seeing the responsibility and putting this gospel for it to everybody that is there to receive it. And he says, I told you that I had a vision and a revelation and I have put it up here so anybody can see that wants to see, wants to know and wants to understand something. I want you to listen at me close. What we strive to do down here is make the thing uncomplicated and make it as simple and as easy and as plain for you to understand as possible. Now that's what we want to do. So then he goes on into other things about Corinthians and I haven't gotten there, but I just want to point that out that he did feel indebted to put this out. And um, he had it all laid, he laid it all out on the charts for everybody to see it. And it's right here in black and white, what he said about keeping this thing uncomplicated and the simplicity of it. And that's trying to, you know, they're trying to take that away from us. Some of these people that are trying to go into some more complicated, you know, they're trying to make it complicated when it's not complicated. And I've talked about this before that the parts uh, because the Bible, I feel, is is very complicated, and I think a lot of people think that they have an understanding of it, but they really don't, and it is kind of woven in a mystery, like we've talked about many times, and a lot of that mystery has been opened up to us through Dr. Kinley. Um, but the simple things that can be pulled out of that Bible I've talked about before. Um, for instance, uh, you will not meet, find me in buildings made by man's hands. Um, I've thrown that out to different people that are not in this gospel and they say, oh, I didn't go to church or I feel bad I don't go to church anymore. And I, I'll usually comment and tell them that scripture, you know, that he's not there, he's not in that building. You know, you're walking into a stone building or whatever structure and, and he's not there. And, um, and the names are the importance of it is placed throughout this Bible in so many ways and in such a matter of fact that um, there's no disputing it. And the other thing that really got to me, I think, and impressed upon me was the one, there is no other intercessor. Because all the years I went into that confessional booth and I actually thought that priest had the power to wipe my sins away. And now, since my eyes have been opened up, I cannot believe I actually thought a man could have that kind of power to take my sins away and absolve me of sin so I would not go to hell now as long as I confessed. And... Um, 
you know, what he's actually doing is he's taking the power away from, I'll say God, because that's what most people call him. And that's what he's doing. He's taking the power right away from him. And they don't see it. I didn't see it then. They don't see it. And it does take a revelation to open up people's eyes. And um, so anyway, I do feel like that change has been made in me where I, these simple things, you cannot dispute them. And um, it is certain, certainly strengthened my faith and is showing me that um, there's no way I could ever turn back like to church. And I know some people have, I've heard some people on the floor mention they knew people that did that. So I, I don't know how you could, but apparently I guess, hopefully I've seen something and maybe they didn't, I don't know. But anyway, that's all I really have. And um, I, I wanna just say the strength comes in returning back to class because if it isn't refreshed all the time, it, it just the importance starts to wane, I think. And it's kind of like brought to our memory every time we come to class, it's brought to our memory and strengthens our faith. And I think that's why it's important to keep returning. So I'm just gonna pass the baton and thank you. Thank you very much. That was really good. It's always really good. <laughs> I know I keep saying stuff like that, but um, so our next speaker will be Dr. L uh, Ladora Nicholas. Everybody can hear me? Yep. Good morning, Claire. Good morning. I, I truly enjoyed what uh, Dr. Carol Miller had to get into. It's just so much, you know, but Yahweh permits you to say what he wants you to say. It's not of you anyway, it's of him, that Holy Spirit. And this is like testimony. All that has been going on like in Acts, you know, we have to, we have to get to that gate of beautiful too. You know what I mean? We have, we, we have, to, we have to pass through that because we was in darkness before coming into class. And I like this this, 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 this this scripture. Well, I like Acts period, you know what I mean? But Yahweh is, is sending a message to the brethren. Don't get caught up in this flesh because it, it, it's not going to inherit his kingdom, flesh and blood. And we know that, you know, and the desires of this flesh is, it, it weighs heavy on you. It weighs heavy on you. Regardless of we, we inside, away from everybody unless we just have to go out there. But you know what, it's still in here, you know, that war is still going on, you know what I mean? He, you know, Satan is, is, is always is that distraction from what Yahweh wants you to know. You know, that's why I say, like Tara said on Wednesday, you gotta keep your hand in the book. You gotta keep your hand in the gospel. You have to, you have to keep going over things, you have to keep, you know, stepping out, you know, because you could get caught up in all kinds of stuff. It knocks on your door. You, you, I mean, I just sit here at home and just, and just more where, where Yahweh bought me from. You know, I have a past that, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. And he always bring me back to New Orleans, where I was at, where it all started from. I came into class in New Orleans. Dead on arrival, didn't know nothing. All that that was taught to me, and it going to church with, with my mother and everything. And I mean, every day constant, you know, every, every everything that was taught, it wasn't the truth. It wasn't until my salvation. It was for the preacher prophet. And, and, and you know, it's it just hard to, have people to walk around and just think, Lord God and Jesus Christ is going to save them. And it, it, they don't even know why, why he did this, why he did that. And you try to explain it to them. Well, you can really can't talk to many people because on account of all this is going on. But yet and still, those that you can't reach or say something to, you know, they don't want to hear, you know what I mean? 
you know, and, and it be that distraction. Now, everybody in my family know that on Wednesday and Sunday, between the hours on Sunday between 11 and 1 and on Wednesday between 7 and 9, that I'm not going to answer my phone. And they will have that distraction. Satan knows how to, how to work on you. You know, he know he knows how to work on. He said he he sends that delusion to you all the time. But I don't even fall for it. Then they get mad when you're not don't answer your phone. Well, I keep saying the same thing. On Wednesday, seven to nine. On Sunday, eleven to one. I'm not gonna answer my phone because I be on Zoom on my phone. And it's hard for them to say, oh, you, you're ducking me, you're denying me, you, you don't want to talk to me, you know, you know, it's just hard, you know, it, it, you know, to keep yourself out of the picture, you know, and y'all would just have to step in. It, 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 it's truly a blessing, you know, because we need that shield and that armor on at all times. We need it on. We need it on. You know, he's that rock. He's that salvation. He's everything. The, the, the end is declared right from the beginning. So we have to, we have to know where we coming from. And he, and I don't care how much I, I look, he keeps me going back to the story don't change. His story do not change regardless of how we look at it. His story do not change. That, 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 that transcript, 1968, I mean, it weighs heavy on me. If the story don't change. We, if it don't go according to the law and the prophet, the fulfillment and everything, you, you, he give us a foundation. We need to stand on that, and don't and don't worry about what other people are saying. You know what I mean? We need to just stand on that. Go on what Yahweh has given us and trust in Him. Hebrews eleven and one it tells us that faith. You know, we need, we need, we know that's a strong thing that, you know, to be bothering this place to have a lot of faith, you know, to, uh, to withstand whatever is going on out there. It just knocks at your door, you know, you know, Jehovah Witness, all, they got all kinds of groups now coming to your door, trying to save you and everything. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, it, it, you know, I heard a, a preacher, he just went to, um, uh, MB Jefferson this morning, um, just with the radio on. He just trying to tell people that if you pay your tithes, you'll have salvation. He said that if he had to burn candles and his light would go off, he was going to pay his tithe because he knew he was going to get his reward in heaven. You know, that that is something to think about. We was all stuck in that tradition back there. You know, pay your tithes and this isn't that going to happen, you know, but it's not. You know, y'all would just say open up my eyes because I've seen things that other people didn't see. And it was a blessing that, I mean, this is a sight that I seen in New Orleans, you know, and it, 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 it you know, it just, it stuck with me. He give you something and he don't, and he don't, and he, he, he give it to you, it's for you. He gave me this here. I keep asking how I did all this and survive all this in New Orleans, that some people are institutionalized now because they just lost their mind for the stuff that they went through. But Yahweh stayed, I, I stayed fast in what Yahweh had gave me. He told me he was going, that promise he made from the beginning that he was going to take care of me. All I had to do is have faith and believe in him. And that's just what I did. I traveled a path that I don't think nobody, you know, and it kind of, it kind of just to me and, Draw tears, but Yahweh brought me from a mighty long way through Yahshua Messiah. Yes, he did. Because what I went through in New Orleans, that was a test of my faith. Did I believe in him? And I told him when I got here, thank you, Father. Yes, I do believe in you. You know what I mean? Because what I was told back there with Lord God and Jesus Christ, that it had nothing to do with what I went through. The Lord God and Jesus Christ, I couldn't even breathe their name. I breathed his name and he and he gave me that witness. I don't have to throw scriptures out there because uh, he, he gave it to me in the witnesses. That's my scripture in the witnesses. If it don't go, don't go according to what he said, we don't have to believe it. If Yahweh didn't give it to you, don't believe it. 
because he gave us a foundation. All those attributes, he gave us that. He loved us just enough to give us what we needed. In the measure that he wanted to give it to us in. So the only leg I'm standing on is his. You know what he gave me? I can't ride nobody else's coattail. I just like Tyra had said, and I said all the time too, you have to know for sure that what Yahweh has given you and you must stand on it. You know, the world will take care of itself because we can't do nothing about what's going on out there. You could talk this and preach this down, get the blood off your head and that's all off your hand and that's all you do. You know what I mean? And let it go. You know what I mean? Because we was all dead on the rabbit and, and, and it has to be a change. Just like Miss Carol Miller said, it, I know it's a change in me because the, the way I was and the way I am now is totally different. I used to lash out at a lot of things. You couldn't say too much to me without me uh, uh, saying it back. My mother used to always say, God, somebody going to kill you. I hope you live because you just you just don't care what come out your mouth. You just say anything, you know, and, and it was like that, you know. I don't mean no harm in it. That, that's just the way I talk, you know what I mean? I, I'm going to be true for about it, you know what I mean? We let the chip fall where they may. But I don't mean no harm in it. But, I mean, that's the way it is. And I asked I ask Yahweh to please. Humble me and bring me down to a level that I won't blurt out things like that. You know what I mean? Try, I don't mean to hurt nobody's feeling, but that's how it is. I've been, he has brought me from a long way. And that's all we need is that foundation. He gave me that foundation. That's what I'm standing on. That's what I'm standing on. Regardless of what anybody may think, I am with, I am in this gospel 24-7. I think about it. I breathe that name. You know, it, he, he just brings me back. I walk that dog path. I seen that darkness. And I seen the light at that darkness. And nobody would never believe it. I tell people the story and they say, uh-uh, how you this and how you did that. It was what the me, it was Yahweh. Do y'all should Messiah. He did that. He brought me out of there. He brought me on that seven-day journey. He resurrected me on that Thursday, on that third day. I left out there on the Friday and I resurrect on the Sunday. He brought me out of that. And when he gave me, when he gave me that, I said, thank you, Father, you know. So we need to just stand on what Yahweh has given us. And don't worry, the rest, it's going to take care of itself. Because this flesh, this, this flesh will bring you through something. It'll bring you through something. But if you get hung up on it, it 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 it, 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 it is dead to you. It is dead to you. Because we could get hung up on this play, worrying about what's going on and how we gonna do this and how we go. I'm not, I, you know, I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, I get a headache just thinking about it. You know what I mean? You know, no. You know, so you know, we are truly blessed that we could still suffer from, from what Yahweh has given us to Zoom. And we don't have to be in that physical room. You know what I mean? Because he has given us. He always, just like we said, you know, when all that, when this earth and this stuff is dissolved, where we gonna be at? I won't be, I won't be in, I won't be in the heaven the realm. Me. I don't, I don't, I don't need to be all this. You know, all this and physical stuff ain't number worry. You know what I mean? Peace, joy, and happiness in the hope of the spirit. That's where I wanna be at. And if I could just sit back and don't do nothing, I, so be it. You know, so be it. So we need to just stay in the in the in the books. Transcripts is good, you know, but guess what? Just ask Yahweh to give us that peace and rest that we desire. That we know He could give us. You know what I mean? And everything else will take care of itself. With those few words, I say hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Dr. Sherry Williams. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I uh, truly enjoyed the comments of the previous speakers, and it is always a pleasure and a joy to learn anything about our Creator as He really is and actually exists. And um, so many things are running through my mind. Um, <clears throat> So let's get um, 
Oh, it just left my mind. It was a scripture, but let's get um, John 17 and three. And then um, let's get John um, worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's get that first. I think it's John. Four and 24. Uh, right. Thank you. So John four and 24 and then John 17 and three. John four and 24. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know prior to coming into class, we really didn't know what spirit was. They have these bumper stickers. Um, well, God is love, but you, someone would say God is spirit. What is spirit? Spirit is God. And you got nowhere, just like you do with the Catholic Church, not knowing, you know, uh, their creator how they just go about to go in a circle here to explain something and then turn around and say but it's a supernatural mystery that can't be understood and that's not true because he's going to tell us john 17 and 3. you're low jennifer you got to come up to the mic or come up to the computer thank you That they might know thee, the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. All right, you're still not there, but I heard it. But yeah. All right, so this is life eternal that they might do what? No. No, that we might know that thou art the only true Elohim. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Uh -huh. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Let's also go get, um, I think it's Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs 29. Yeah, uh, no, it's uh, Isaiah, I believe. Um, lack of knowledge. I think that's Hosea, the fourth chapter. Thank you. You know, when you're on the floor, all the scriptures just leave you. Hosea uh, three, three and six. I'm sorry, four and six. Uh, you can pick it up at one. If Hosea, you want. <laughs> Hosea, okay. Hosea four and one. Hear the word of Yahweh, ye children of Israel. For Yahweh hath the controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Mm -hmm. He has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, nor mm -hmm. mercy, nor knowledge of Elohim in the land. Mm -hmm. And don't we see that playing out right now before our very eyes? Mm -hmm. One. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing, oh, wow. <laughs> committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Mm. And we know that adultery, although physical, is a spiritual adultery, not knowing your creator mm -hmm. and intercoursing with others, other gods, other deities, whatever they are to you. Go on. Therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fish, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Ye, did we, did we, ye let no man strive nor reprove another for thy people or as they that strive with the priest. 
Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet shall also fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgiven, forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. Mm -hmm. And isn't Yahweh knowledge? He's intelligence, wisdom. He is these things, not that he possesses them. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of knowing our creator as he really is and actually exists. So because we have rejected or they have, hopefully, you know, we haven't rejected Yah knowledge or rejected Yahweh. And he says that too, I believe, um, I think, I believe it was with Samuel, wasn't it? Where he says, they have not rejected you, but they rejected me. I believe that was with Samuel. Samuel the yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I will also, and we see that in the land, in, in, in the land, there's no knowledge in, uh, of Yahweh. No mercy, no, no, none of these things that Yahweh has given to us going on. So let's go to the scripture reading. So Yahweh wants us to know him. It's required that we know him as he really is and actually exists. And he's provided a way for us to do that. So before I go to the scripture reading, let's go back and get John 5 and 39. Luke 24 and 25, Isaiah 8 and 20. How do we go about doing this? It's a beautiful uh, introduction that Carol brought in to renounce the hidden things in, in that transcript of Dr. Kinley's, renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. So, and, and how, da, how Yahweh set this up? What how Yahweh set this up for us to know him. He's provided the means or the way of escape, and he always has. We used to say this all the time, you know, uh, in starting class, at the beginning of this class, this, and, and it says it in the moderation, this class is a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder by the creator. And he went about to expound and explain things that he was shown in his vision and, and show how they go according to Isaiah 8 and 20. But let's go first and get John 5 and 39, Luke 24 and 25. Can you hear us now? Low, you're low. Okay. okay. And that's go on. Yeah, go on. Okay. He but in them you think he had eternal life, and they just okay. It's really choppy here. I don't know if it's like that for anyone else. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, it is. I can jump in and read. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Someone else have it, John 539. We couldn't hear that. John 539. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So this in my Bible, King James Bible, is a red letter. So that means Jesus is talking, but we know there's no J, no Jesus. So Yahshua is saying here, ye search the scriptures, and in them you thought you had eternal life, but those scriptures are testifying of me. And we were so in darkness, and I'm going to say it that way, so in darkness that we didn't even know what the scriptures were. I know I didn't. I certainly thought and was taught that they were Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And come to find out they weren't even written at the time that the Savior is, is saying these things. So search the scriptures. So in them, you think you have eternal life and they are they that testify of me. So what are the scriptures? We come to find out the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are the first five books of the Bible attributed to Moses. 
And the other 34 books of the Bible are the prophets, eight and John, uh, Isaiah 8 and 20, and then Luke. Isaiah, anybody have it? Go ahead. Just go. Yeah. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Mm -hmm. So this word to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. And go on, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Go to Luke, please. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Mm -hmm. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And isn't that what in Acts, what he's talking about too? Paul is talking about with Peter and the prophets. They're talking about to the, to the law, the testimony, the prophets. And something else just, jump, okay, uh, the simplicity. Okay, if someone can find that for me. So here, John, uh, Luke 24. So he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. We come to find out that this Bible is about Yahshua. It's about salvation. It's about our savior. It's about how, how he is going about to uh, bring in Did you mean to mute yourself, Sherry? Yeah, my oh, phone. Oh, okay. Real quick. So uh, did I have something else? Simplicity. You, uh, yeah. yeah, simplicity. 2 Corinthians 127. 2 Corinthians. Because one of the speakers mentioned First, this morning, too, about that. 1 Corinthians. Corinthians 127. But Yahweh had chosen the foolish things of the uh -huh. world to confound the wise. Uh -huh. And Elohim hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath Elohim chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Go. Oh, is that it? I oh, there's know. more actually. Okay, up there's higher. more. Okay, and I want you to get that. But despise, okay. go back to where you read despise. He chose um uh 27 but let me pick it up at 20. Okay. Um, where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this world mm -hmm. hath not yahweh made foolish the wisdom of this world for after that in the wisdom of yahweh the world by wisdom knew not yahweh it pleased yahweh by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Mm -hmm. Now let's get down to 27. But Yahweh had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and, and had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath Yahweh chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, there's just so much there to break down. <laughs> okay. And let me see. So where is the wise and where is the scribe? Where's the disputer of this world? Had not Yahweh made foolish the wisdom of this world? And we can see that taking place this very day. The, the wisdom of this world is foolishness to Yahweh and we and he has allowed us to 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 understand this through the preaching of the gospel though that's how we understand it it's not just uh any old way it's through the preaching of the gospel and it's through the uh, uh, a pattern that was given okay so and for after that in the wisdom of Yahweh the world by wisdom knew not Yahweh by wisdom, they don't know him. There's a lot of smart people out here in the world, right? That would be academically smart, would be, would, you would call intelligent, you would call, what do they call some of these 
um, CEOs and, and, um, and um, leaders of these companies, geniuses, Apple, Job, what's his name? Steve Jobs, right? And these people, they're called, they're called geniuses, right? Um, Bezos, right? The Amazon, you know, they've made what? Oh man, we could go so many places here into Ezekiel too, but um, they've made a lot of money and they're wise people. They're, they know what people like, they know what people want and they give it to them, right? So you would think they're wise, but Yahweh is using this to confound the wisdom of the wise. And there's so much more for after that in the wisdom of Yahweh by the world, the world by wisdom knew not Yahweh, it pleased Yahweh by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe by preaching what? First Corinthians 15. And I'm going a different way. This is not what I intended. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get back to Acts. First, First Corinthians 15 and one. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. Mm -hmm. Which we have received and wherein we stand. Go on. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed mm -hmm. in vain. And that's another witness. You know, we are compassed about so with so great a cloud of witnesses because we know and, and you know that this gospel has been preached and, and we see Yahweh, we see that people have believed it in vain. And let's pray that that's not us that we're not believing this in vain. Go on. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, mm -hmm. how that the Messiah died for our sins, according to the scriptures, mm -hmm. and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. All of it according to the scriptures. And again, not knowing what the scriptures were, thinking Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these, um, you know, and let me not go there. So we were taught what the scriptures are. First five books of what's considered the Old Testament. The other 34 books considered the prophets to the law and to the testimony the prophets, to the law and to the prophets. They speak, if they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. Let's get um, Psalms 40 and seven. And Joel, actually, if you can go back and pick up 22, verse 22 on in there, Corinthians for me and read back down. Psalms 40 and 7. Mm -hmm. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Mm -hmm. So he's declaring that book. This book is written of him. And this is the book. <laughs> There's so much there too. Go on though. I <laughs> delight to do thy will. Mm -hmm. Oh my L. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Actually, okay, thank you. I wanted to go, so lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. So these scriptures are written of Yahshua. Again, how he's going to die, the gospel, his death, his burial, his resurrection, according to the scriptures. But let's go back to Second, First Corinthians for 22. Oh. No, 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 I'm sorry. You know where you were, Joe. One, isn't it? First Corinthians one. The uh, foolishness, the wisdom, the simplicity. Where was that at? Yes, yes, yes. That was in First Corinthians. I'm sorry. First chapter. Yes. First Corinthians. Yeah, First Corinthians one and twenty. Uh, one and twenty. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? You could pick it up at twenty-two for me. For, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach the Messiah. Oh, you're you were muted. I was muted. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, let me pick it back up. Okay. 
But we preach the Messiah crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, mm -hmm. unto the Greeks, foolishness. Yeah. Unto the Jews, a stumbling block. Go on. And unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them that which are called, both Jews and Greeks, the Messiah, the Yahshua, the power of, of Elohim, and the wisdom of Elohim. Mm -hmm. But unto them which are called, and he had to call each and every one of us in here. He has to call us in here. He has to sit us down and he has to make us to understand. He makes us to understand. And there's a scripture over in Daniel where he says that to Daniel. Daniel, make this man to understand. Go on. Uh, where did I pick up? Um, 25. 25, yeah. Because the foolishness of Yahweh is wiser than man. Mm -hmm. And the weakness of Yahweh is stronger than man. Mm -hmm. If there's weakness there, that's, you know, this right. is being said weak. <laughs> yes. Go on. For ye see your, for ye see your calling brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, mm -hmm. not many mighty, not many noble are called. called. So all of this, you know, going on around us, and it seems like, you, and, and not seems like, we are compassed about. We're just compassed about with it all. You know, just a side note, I was thinking, you know, you know, with us having to leave our room now or give up our room and stuff, but, you know, I was going back to where we came from over on Nebraska, and I was thinking how Yahweh had us between two whorehouses, you know, and so literally we were between two whorehouses and three, actually, when that other uh, church moved in, but we had a church on the corner, we had the, the, the strip club next to us, and then another church moved in right next door to us. And it just reminds me of being in Goshen, you know, how with the children of Israel, how they were surrounded by Egyptians, you know, on every side. And many times they were surrounded by different things, you know, um, and there was light with them. And that light was Yahshua, right? Always with them, you know, how they followed that cloud even, you know, it was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, but they had light. In this tabernacle, there had to continuously be light, you know? So here we were just a speck, for example. And, you know, as it's talked about, even one of our, our brethren had talked about in the universe, we're just a speck not a little pin pin dot you know but and surrounded by darkness and that's like the children down in egypt they were surrounded in darkness but there was light in yahshua being down there with them but go on but yahweh have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise yes you and see yahweh that? but yahweh has chosen that He's chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Yes. And Yahweh have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Because mm -hmm. who would think that it would be this way through a death, a burial, and a resurrection, through blood, water, spirit? Who would think that? That's the way to salvation. They certainly didn't because even when the children of Israel were down in Egypt, you know, Pharaoh's and his host thought, oh, they could join another nation and rise up against them. But that wasn't Yahweh's plan. Yahweh had chosen. He has chosen. And I lost my spot. He has chosen. I'm the sorry. foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Yes. The foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Go on. And Yahweh have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Mm -hmm. And base things of the world and things which are despised have Yahweh chosen. And things which are despised. You know, and that stuck in my mind a couple of weeks ago, even with our scripture reading there. And I don't remember what it was, but Yahweh is hated. And we shall be hated, it talks about, for you shall be hated for my name's sake. Hated. That's a strong, powerful emotion. And, you know, and, and I started thinking in, in my life, you know, just a, a little side note, too, again, you know, I, I don't think I've ever hated anybody. 
I might have disliked somebody because that's a powerful emotion to hate somebody and it consumes you. It, ha it, ha it would consume you. And Yahweh, before I even knew him, who he was, you know, I had never felt that strong of emotion for someone to hate them, to say I hated them, you know, but, and you just think how strong an emotion disliking someone could be, you know, if you dislike someone, you know, but he hated, so they hated him. So they despised mm -hmm. the base things of the world and things which are despised hath Yahweh chosen. Yea, these are the things he's chosen and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. All right. Yahweh has chosen these things. To and and oh where do I want to go? to say this um let's just go to the scripture reading now to acts the third chapter right third chapter you want to start at one yes and this is paul writing here right acts three and one mm -hmm. now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. And that's about 3 p.m. And think about, remember the hour of prayer. We did a whole uh, uh, topic on that at one point in our textbook workshop, I believe it was the hour of prayer. So this is ninth hour is 3 p.m. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that, that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask in alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Yahshua, the Messiah of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Mm -hmm. Now, now, didn't Yahshua do something like this also? Heal a lame man? Uh, yes, he did. Okay, where is that at? I'll have to look. Thank you. All right. My memory is kind of fuzzy, but I, uh, all right, go on. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and, and he immediately took him by the right hand, the right hand. And we got into a lecture about that too. Yahshua being the right hand. Uh, and it, oh, there's so many scriptures about um, Yahweh's hand. Go on though. And lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. What did he say? Immediately, immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he had been there for how long? From his mother's womb. All right. I believe this is, is this the 42? He was 40 years old? I, or is that the, I know the one with Yahshua, I believe was he was 40. John, yeah. Th th well, this one, this one picks up he was 40 in the fourth verse, number uh, 22, four and 22. For the man was above 40 years old mm -hmm. on whom this miracle of healing was showed. Mm -hmm. uh, the healing with Yahshua is in John, the fifth chapter. Okay. What were you reading there, Joel, then? That was uh, Acts 4 and 22. Oh, and 4. Okay. So it picks it up a little later that he was 40 also. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So we have that print. And this is how we know how we can discern and avoid being deceived if we keep in in the book and we go according to the pattern that was given the pattern this tabernacle pattern has principles laid up in it go on though i don't want to get off yet and in he leap and he leaping up stood and walked mm -hmm. and entered with them into the temple mm -hmm. walking and leaping and praising yahweh Mm -hmm. walking and leaping and praising Yahweh. And that's what we do. 
you know, whether, it, you know, physically so or spiritually, it's walking and leaping and praising Yahweh that he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us. That's where we're headed and I'm kind of jumping ahead, but that's where we're it translated us into the kingdom of his dear son and all through a process though. That's the beauty. It's a process and he's allowing us to see it and we have to go through it. We have to go through it. Go on. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful mm -hmm. gate of the temple. And they knew, just as with Yahshua, when he healed that lame man, they knew. Go on. And they were filled with wonder and amazement mm -hmm. at that which had happened unto him. Mm -hmm. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Mm -hmm. and when peter saw it he answered unto the people ye men of israel why marvel ye at this or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk right and yashua was always declaring the father in me he doeth the work and that's what they're doing they're declaring it's the father it's yashua in them that is doing the work whom you crucified. And they point that out to them later on. The one you crucified, there was something else. And Peter saw it and said unto the people, why marvel ye at this? Because Joshua had told them too. He said, um, greater works will you do? You know, and he had done many, many wondrous works. So much so that the world, it says, couldn't contain them if it had all been written, all the things that Yahshua went about to do. So, but he had told his disciples that greater works will they do than he did. So, and he's given them the witnesses, you know, uh, and that, and Peter is recognizing that. And Peter's the one who denied Yahshua, right? Three times, three times before having the Holy Spirit. And Yahshua told him he was going to do that. But Peter stands up boldly after getting the Holy Spirit. Then he's able to stand up to this and no fear, no fear of his life where before he feared. So Peter is standing up. Why are you marveling at this? Why? Why? You've seen the miracles that Yahweh performed or Yahshua performed. Go on. The Elohim of Abraham. And of mm -hmm. Isaac and of Jacob, the Elohim of our fathers, hath glorified his son Yahshua, whom ye delivered up and denied him mm -hmm. in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Mm -hmm. And he's saying Pilate was determined to let him go, but you all denied him and prevented it. But we know now we know these things are for our learning, for our admonition. And we know that it was the purpose of Yahweh. It had to happen this way. Just as with the children of Israel, when they came up out of Egypt, they had to go a certain way. Just as when Moses, when he had to flee up out of Egypt, Yahweh took him a certain way. So there's, what does Yahshua say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. So you're going to follow that path. You're going to follow the path that Yahweh has set up for us. So here, um, so Peter is telling them, you denied it, but it was meant to be that way. It was meant to be that way. And you know, it was meant to be that way for us, <laughs> for our learning, so we could look back at these things and, and understand them and know how Yahweh worked his purpose. Go on. Okay. And Cherry, did you want the scripture with the Yahshua and the lame man? Yes. Yes. So where are we here on 13, I think, right? Okay, right. Um, yes. Yes, so and determined to let him go. Do you want me to pick it up at 13? Or yes. Or 14? And now you, you could hold on, Pam, and let Tara get okay. um, with, yes. Uh, I think it's uh, Mark, uh, the second chapter. And I'm going to pick it up at uh, two. Uh, and, straight, and straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, 
no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Joshua saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. But there were a certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why do this man, why do this man thus speak blasphemy who can forgive sins but Yahweh only? And immediately when Yahshua perceived in his spirit that they were so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether it is easy to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven, be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. Mm -hmm. But you see, too, those those scribes and Pharisees that were sitting there, they despised. They were despising Yahshua then, you know, for healing a man. And they despised him for healing on the Sabbath, you know. So just going back with that, you know, Yahweh's saying he's hated. He's hated and he's showing us these things, how people just, you know, for somebody doing good, you're hated. Go on, go back to um, uh, Acts. Acts Is three. that it, Farah? I'm sorry, that was that it, was, I think. He says, he just, he says, but that ye may know that the son of man have power on earth to forgive sins. He say to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way unto thy house. Mm -hmm. And immediately he rose up and took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified, uh -huh. saying, we never saw it on this fashion. Mm -hmm. See there? So he took up his bed immediately also. And then, and um, what else, Tara? Go on. He took up his bed immediately, and they all marveled, mm -hmm. you know? They're all marveling at these wondrous works that are taking place. And yet they still, they still deny him. They still despise him. Just like the children of Israel down in Egypt saw the devastation Yahweh poured out on that land. Then they get out here into the wilderness and they doubt Yahweh. And that goes on to this very day, even in, even in the Institute that people will say, oh, they have all this faith in Yahweh, but it's, they, it's, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. You know, you can say it with your lips, but it's not, it's not the service with your lips. It's what you believe and what you do that is showing your faith in Yahweh through whatever, whatever. And he's gonna, he is El Shaddai. He is almighty provider that will not ever end. It won't ever end. He will provide when, you know, when you, you know, oh man, how to even say this. It's, it's like here, they're saying, why marvel? It's not even anything to marvel at. It's something to be grateful for. Yes, be extremely grateful, but it's not a marvel that he's taken because he that he's taken care of us because he said he would. He said he, he he would. He said if he clothes the grass and feeds the birds, how much more will he not take care of us? But we don't believe that. Oh, we 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 still don't believe it. Go on uh, back to Acts for me, please. Acts. And I see it all the time. I see it so many times. People say things with their mouths and with their lips, and it doesn't manifest. It doesn't manifest. Go on. Acts 3 and 13. The Elohim of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the Elohim of our fathers, hath glorified his son Yahshua, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But, he, but ye denied the Holy One and the just mm -hmm. and desired a murderer to be granted unto you mm -hmm. and killed the Prince of Life, 
whom Yahweh hath raised from the dead, whereof you, we are witnesses. Mm -hmm. and, and his name. Were witnesses. They're saying they saw it. They were witnesses. Go on. And his name through faith. Um, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. Mm -hmm. And what does Yahweh say about that? Acts 17, I believe it is. Acts 17, you did it through ignorance, but what does he say about that? I believe it's Acts 17. And 23, whom he ignorantly worshiped. No, uh, the, the Yahweh winked at. Oh, uh, this um, is it Acts? Isaiah? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah, 30. <laughs> and the times of this ignorance, yeah. Yahweh winked at. See, at the times of that ignorance, Yahweh winked at. And but now, now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And you know, we thought what we thought we had it all, oh, so much wrong. But it's thanks be to Yahweh through Yahshua, you know, because we thought repent. What did we think? Oh, we had to give up something, right? We had to do Lent. We had to give up cigarettes or we had to give up food. <laughs> the foolishness, is that not foolishness to us now? You know, to think that we could give up drinking give up whatever your vice was, you know, whatever you thought your vice was, you thought you were going to give that up to please your creator. You were going to give it up for what? 40 days? For, that's the foolishness that Yahweh's talking about of this world. Some of it, there's so much of it, all of it's foolishness, you know, but thanks be to Yahweh through Yahshua that we can understand these things. But think, think of that. We're going to give up something to please our creator. And we're going to do that for 40 days, right? Is that what Lynn is? How long? 40 days? Somebody help me. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Isn't it about days. 40 days? Yeah. So we're going to do this. And, and <laughs> you got, you know, now we have to kind of chuckle at this stuff. 40, you're going to give it up for 40, but it's okay before the 40 days. And it's okay after the 40 days to go <laughs> back to do that, right? <laughs> This is the foolishness that mm -hmm. Yahweh is talking about. Some of it, just craziness. But the times of the ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commanded, and we thought repent had to do that. That's what we thought repenting was doing by giving up something or doing something or sacrificing something, you know? And we come to find out simply change your mind. Repent means to simply change your mind. And we know and understand, and please know and understand that when I'm saying these things, I know that it's through Yahshua only that this things, these things can happen. Please know that, that it, I do know that, that it's through Yahshua only. But you know, also, you know, they have a, a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. And Dr. Kinley, I believe said somewhere in these transcripts, you know, if, if you have a true desire to know your creator, Yahweh is obligated. He's obligated to, to, to show you and give us the truth. He's the only right. one that can. We can't go anywhere else to get it. So if we have a sincere desire and intent to know our creator as he really is and actually exists, and we want the truth, because people out here don't want the truth. You got 70 million people or whatever that number was, that do not want the truth. Yahweh is showing us that was a close race, right? And we know that down through the ages of dispensations, those two mysteries are running neck and neck, right? Side by side. And Yahweh is showing us that in this earth plane with this election. It's not about, for us, it's not about the political aspects. It's what it's Romans 1, 19 and 20. What Yahweh is showing us those two mysteries are running down the ages and dispensations side by side. It's hard sometimes to tell the lie. You know, it, it's hard to discern sometimes for, well, we know 70 million people cannot discern a lie. 
you know? And I saw in the news where one woman says they stole the election. They, she's really believing this. But that's, that's not, I'm not getting into political. I'm just sh using this to show how that mystery of iniquity has blinded the minds. How, and you know, we could be there. We could be in that darkness. Yahweh put him in that darkness. He did it. But go on. I'm sorry. I don't want to get off. Where are we? I've Sherry. Okay. Um, so we are in, um, I believe, 18. Yes. Okay. Acts 3 and 18. But those things which Yahweh before hath showed by the mouth of all his prophets mm -hmm. that the Messiah should suffer he hath so fulfilled. And what did he say? And by the mouth of all the prophets, mm -hmm. we're in 18, but, but those things which Yahweh before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets, all his prophets, not the false prophets, all his prophets. And, and that's all they, they all testified the same thing to the death, the burial and the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. And that's the scriptures, according to the scriptures. Go on. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come for the presence of Yahweh. Here he says, repent again, Acts uh, 17 and 30, in the times of the ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So that's all he's asking us. Repent, change your mind. Go on. And he shall send Yahshua the Messiah, which before was preached unto you, mm -hmm. whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, when Yahweh has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Mm -hmm. And he shall send Yahshua the Messiah, which before was preached. Where was he preached? Paul preached about him, the gospel. He took us back to... Uh, the law and the prophets to Genesis, to Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and then the prophets speaking of Yahshua, Moses laying down those principles of death, a burial, a resurrection, blood, water, spirit, um, the prophets, you know, one sh uh, a, a virgin shall conceive you know, and you shall call his name, Emmanuel, and or Yahshua, and he's going to save his people from their sins, and going about to show, and and um, it wrapped up, somebody mentioned it early, it's all wrapped up in a mystery, but Yahweh, and, and uh, go on, let me, let me try to finish this up, and then I want to finish up with, I think, Colossians. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall Yahweh your Elohim raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Mm -hmm. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Mm -hmm. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which Yahweh made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you, first Yahweh, having raised up his son Yahshua, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Mm -hmm. Let me read that one though, Pam. Unto you first, Yahweh, having raised up his son Yahshua, sent him to bless you and turning away. So unto you first, he's talking to the Jews at this time. So unto them, it was given first that, um, you know, the um, Holy Spirit, having raised up his son, Yahshua, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities, you know, but they couldn't do it. And, and we know that, and it wasn't meant for them. Not all that are of Israel, are of Israel, you know, and it's, we are truly grateful and appreciative that we could be grafted in and not have to go through what they went through, you know, and our faith is based on believing what Yahweh said. And, you know, and it's still hard for people to believe what Yahweh says. He's going to take care of you. Why doubt ye? Colossians. 
was one in twenty. One in twenty six. Yes. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons. Mm -hmm. To whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations, nations, which is the Messiah in you, the only hope of glory. That's what Dr. Kinley said. That is our only hope of glory only hope and with that i'll just say hallelujah thank you for the time all praises to yahweh through yahshua the messiah our sovereign hallelujah hallelujah thank you very much it's been a great class this morning um our next speaker will be a visitor from southfield michigan dr felicia hamilton Good evening, every. I'm sorry. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I'll echo. First of all, I want to say thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to say anything about our Heavenly Father Yahweh, and I will echo the dean. This has been an awesome class, and Ashley was content to just sit and listen. Um, but it's Yahweh that decides, you know, who will do what and when. Um, but I am very grateful. I, I really enjoyed Sherry. I, I came in. I think right at the end of the, the speaker, Latara. So I didn't, I mean, um, Ladora, I didn't get to hear her testimony, but I'm sure it was the same testimony that Sherry had. And that was the glory of Yahshua the Messiah and the gospel. Um, something that Sherry said really caught my attention because it's the same thing that happened with the brethren in Southfield. You know, we uh, gave up our um, location um, because the uh, landlord was not willing to upgrade the HVAC system you know, to allow it to CDC standards. So we said, well, you know, we can't do that. So we left. But before we did, we were also between <laughs> two prostitutes, as, as Sherry put it. We had a uh, gospel singing recording studio on one side of us and a Reiki or Reiki studio on the other side of us. So it just goes to show you, and I never thought about it the way she said it, how Yahweh will pull us out of Babylon. See, now we're not we're not in between those two evil things, you know, which we all know everything physical points to something spiritual. Yahweh said, "Come out of Babylon, my children." And that's what he's doing with all of us. So, don't be dismayed that you know you had to give up your physical location because that is showing and what Yahweh has been doing with this virus and with us going on Zoom that we shouldn't be concerned about the physical. Our main goal and focus should be preaching the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, no matter the medium. So what Yahweh has done has given us an electronic or in the cloud medium to preach this gospel because eventually and sooner than later, we're gonna leave and we're all gonna be back in the cloud, so to speak. So I, I really enjoy that. And it, it just, like I said, it just goes to show you that the body of Yahshua doesn't have any schisms in it. There's no division in Yahshua the Messiah. When the sons speak and it's, and it's the true spirit, it's the spirit of righteousness, it's, everything's in agreement with one another. And like Sherry said, we may disagree on some things and that's because we're still in the physical, but that's okay. We disagree, but we love each other and we come back together and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Or, oh, you, you know what, you're right. You corrected me on something I said and I appreciate it. I remember last year when I got a chance to visit the old brethren in Oakland, I said something on the floor that was um, incorrect and not knowing that I said it. As soon as I got off the floor, I had must have had three or four people in succession come to me out of love and the way they did it. They said, you know, I really enjoyed that. But something you said wasn't right. And I went, oh, you, I said that. They said, yeah, you did. You probably didn't realize you said, I said, no, I didn't. So see the body, like I said, there's no schism in the body. So when it's something that's out of order, the sons will correct each other. But guess what? When you're a son, you take that correction or you take that chastisement because you know you are a son. It's when you're not chastised or you're not corrected that you better be a little bit worried because I'm not going out chastising kids that are not my own. I don't give a dang what they do. Now my own, even though they're grown, I'm gonna say, hey, that's wrong. 
So we know we're of Yahweh when we have brethren correct us out of love and you receive it in love. I always receive it in love because I know that's the goal. Now, I don't, I think Sherry mentioned your scripture lesson, but she didn't really say what it was. What was the scripture for today? Acts, the third chapter. Okay, let's, let's start with that. And then I want to jump over to Hebrews 11 chapter when you get a chance, because someone did mention that. Do you want to go ahead, Tara? Uh, we are in Acts. Well, yeah, start with three Acts and one. Three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Acts three and one. Mm -hmm. Now, Peter and John went up together unto the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Mm -hmm to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Mm -hmm. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked in alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah, rise up and walk. Mm -hmm. And he rose and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising Yahweh. Okay, stop right there. So there was a lot she, she got with that. And I'm going to try and um, go in order. So star formula Tara at the beginning. And I'm going to stop you this time. Okay. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, uh -huh. being the ninth hour. Uh -huh. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Now stop. So this man was lame from birth. That means he never walked. Now, all of us, whether we have children or not, we know that when a child learns to walk, they're wobbly, they're unsteady, they're unsure, they're shaky. They, you know, it's, it's a new thing for them. They, they don't just stand up and start walking. We know they're wobbly. But as you'll, you'll see when she reads, that's, that's not the case with this person. I'll also go to say that people that have have walked all their lives and maybe broken a bone and have had to, you know, learn to walk again. They also are shaky. They're wobbly. They're unsure that they're, they're, they, they're kind of scared to take a step because it's, it's, you know, you're, you haven't done it in a while. So now this man was lame from the time he was born. So he never crawled or anything. He, he didn't learn to walk, but now this thing happens to him. Keep reading Latara right where you're at. Okay, um, was three. Whom seeing Peter and John about mm -hmm. to go into the temple asked in alms, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Now stop. So now here's Peter and John walking in to this gate where this guy is placed every day. And what they said to him was, look at us, look at me. If you think about what they're asking, it's the same thing when Moses was at that burning bush. And he said, I need to now turn aside and see this great sight. We all know the story. Moses didn't wasn't looking at the bush and then turned his head so he wouldn't see the bush. He turned aside all his concepts and opinions. So here Peter and James is, I mean, Peter and John. So now remember, now we're in the fulfillment. What they're doing now Remember, Moses was looking at it and he turned aside all his concepts and opinions. This man wasn't looking because remember, Yahshua has now been buried, resurrected from the grave, poured his spirit out. Now we need to be looking at Yahshua. So that's why they said, now look at me. This is, remember, this is the, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Now after Pentecost, they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Now Yahshua said, look at me, keep your focus on me. Take it off of whatever you're looking at, lame man, and look at me. So what happens when he looks at them? And they said he, they start that one part over for me, Latara, when they say, look at us. Okay. 
4 and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with See, John. he's looking at him that's Yahshua calling you Sherry come out of Babylon Latara come out of Babylon Pam come out of Babylon Felicia come out of Babylon when you do that you're looking at him because he's looking at you and he's calling you by name go ahead sweetheart keep reading said look on us mm -hmm. and he gave heed unto them he listened. He listened to the Holy Spirit. That's what Sherry was saying. You listen and you have faith in the Holy Spirit. Keep reading. Expecting to receive something of them. He's expecting something physical, even though he's, but see, he still had faith that they were going to give him something, but he thought it was something physical. We now know it has to be spiritual. When Yahweh calls you and you look at him, you're expecting something spiritual, a gift from him go ahead then peter said silver and gold have i none physical things i'm not gonna give you go ahead but such as i have give i be now he's giving it to him freely what do we do when we're on these zooms or when we were in classes we are given we're giving what was given to us freely. We weren't charged. We weren't asked to give up houses or cars or anything. All we had to give was attention. And that's what they're asked. That's what they're saying. What was given to us, we're giving to you freely. Go ahead. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, mm -hmm. rise up and walk. So what we were given was power. They were given power when they received that Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Now what they're doing, they're transferring, not transferring, they're sharing that power because the transfer, it means it's, I don't have it anymore. That's not what they did. Now they're sharing that power that was given to them. And now they're saying, rise up and walk. That's what Yahweh does to us. Come out of Babylon, rise up and walk towards me. Keep your focus on me while you're walking. Go ahead. And he took him by the right hand. Why by the right hand? Remember, you, you're thinking about this from a spiritual standpoint. Yahshua sat down when he went, when he ascended unto heaven, he sat down on the right hand of the father, not the left. You look at your chart, you bring up that um, a uh, cardinal ordinance chart and you look at Yahshua on that cross. What's on the right side? The spiritual things of Yahweh are on the right side. He fulfilled all those cardinal ordinances. So they have to take the right hand. They can't take their left hand because if they take the left hand, then all they'll be doing is giving him some silver and gold that he wanted. They're giving him spiritual things. You know, they're healing him. Um, remember, this is pointing to something spiritual. Him being healed from the physical standpoint is pointing to something spiritual. So they have to take him by the right hand because it's on the right hand side that you see the things are in the New Testament. All those things are fulfilled. Go ahead. So they, they took him by the right hand. And lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Now stop. So now when you're taken, when Yahshua takes you by the right hand and lifts you up from a spiritual standpoint, like Sherry said, you don't worry about all that other stuff anymore. We, 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 we struggle with it a little bit. Why? Because we're still in the physical, but because our focus is on Yahshua, like they said, look at me because we're looking at him. We immediately receive strength. What are you talking about? When I came into the zoom, I was a little bit down just hearing the speakers. I immediately received strength. My, my spirit is edified again. This is that good hearty soul food that, that meal that just makes you just sit down and go, woo. That was good. I want some more in a minute. You know, you, you go back for some more, but this is that good hearty soul food. So that's your spirit receiving strength. That's his ankle bones receiving strength. That's your spirit receiving strength. When you hear this gospel being preached as it was given to us, not altering it, not changing it, not adding a little to it, not taking away from it exactly how it was given. That's what gives you strength. Keep reading. And he leaping up stood and walked and now entered. Now stop, wait a minute. Now remember at the beginning of my discourse, I talked about when somebody's, when a child is born and they start getting to that age where they should be walking, they don't just immediately stand up and start walking and like, hey, mom, dad, I got this. No, they're wobbly, they're unsure. They're reaching for their mom or their dad or a table or whatever so they can hurry up and get there because they think they're going to fall. That's not what he did. It says he immediately received strength and he started walking. What or who can do that? 
Only the gospel can do that. And what is that pointing to from a spiritual standpoint? When Yahweh pulls you out of the world or on from the left side of that chart to the right side, you immediately receive strength. You're like, oh my goodness, I've been groping in darkness all this time. Then you're, you're, you're strong in the gospel. Then you're confident in what you, oh my goodness, you stay around long enough. Yahweh's building that foundation within you brick by brick, you know, and that's what it takes. And the foundation is built and it's shored up. You got those pieces of rhubarb or that steel within that cement, shoring that foundation up. And that's what this gospel does. The longer you're in it, and the more you do your studying and your reading and your communing with the brethren, your foundation is being sure. So just like this man, him immediately walking and, and leaping in there, he had confidence that he could do it. He wasn't, oh, well, he said I should rise up and walk. So let me, I don't know. I've never done it before. So no, it was immediate. That's what the gospel does for you. It brings you to a point where your confidence is of Yahweh. When I logged on, I knew I was going to receive some strength just listening to the gospel. And that's really all I wanted was to hear it because it's soothing. It's that good soul food for your soul. Now keep reading because he, and go back to the part where he says he, he gave him his right hand. Okay. And he took him by the right hand mm -hmm. and lifted him up. Mm -hmm. and, and he lifted him up. Isn't that what we do, Latara? Mm -hmm. You lift up your brethren when you're talking to them. If you're talking to a brethren and they're down, you call me, hey, Felicia, you know, you sounded kind of down. Let's talk. You know, I may vent for a while, but you know what you're going to do being the son of Yahweh. You're going to bring it back to Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Time after time, I can count on that. Sometimes I call people. I just, you know, I'm going to tell you this, this because I have to be honest. Sometimes if you want to be in the funk, don't talk to a brethren. <laughs> you ain't gonna be able to stay in the funk you're talking to one of the brethren because they're gonna be like look you know Yahweh Yahweh knows Yahweh this and you're gonna be like oh man I ain't wanna if I want to be in the funk I talk to one of them carnal people out in the world because they're gonna be like yeah girl and you know yeah that's crazy we shouldn't be yeah we should rise up mm -mm, not a brother brother gonna be like look I understand all that but we know Yahshua got this all in order we know he got it Mm -hmm. that's what we do for one another and that's why i love the brother and that's why we say we all wear have believe it or not spirit is thicker than blood i have family that i don't talk to when i'm down why because they're so carnal they're not in this gospel but if i know i need to be lifted up i'm calling the tyra la tyra um i'm i'm i need some spiritual food and that's what she's going to give it to me so with that she is more family to me than they are spirit is thicker than blood keep reading and he leaping up stood mm -hmm. and walked mm -hmm. and entered with them into the temple and walking and leaping and praising Yahweh. That's what was he doing? He was doing what? And he entered with them into the temple and walking and leaping and praising Yahweh. Now, isn't that what we do? Now, if I had that call with Latara and she's, you know, lifted me up afterwards, before we hang up, I'd be like, you know what? Thank you, sis. That's what I needed. Thank you, Yahshua. Now I'm walking, I'm leaping, I'm praising Yahweh because what did he do? He gave me that spiritual food that I needed to come out of that funk that I was in. I came out of Babylon and that's what he's doing for all of us. So that, that was enough of that. Get me Hebrews, the 11th chapter. So it's just, for me, it's an encouragement and that's what Yahweh always gives me to give and that's what I want all of you to know what because we are all part of the body of Yahshua all of us have different gifts and if you look at those diversity of gifts it goes exactly by the pattern because everything what Yahweh does that's all it is so whatever your gift is you thank Yahweh for that gift because trust me he can take it from you if you don't you give Yahweh all the honor and glory. You do like that lame man did. You 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 jump up and down, leaping and praising and Yahshua the Messiah. Not physically so, but inside you always give an honor and glory to your father. Now this, because Sherry mentioned Hebrews 11 chapter. Now what I want you to do, Latara, or who's ever going to read it. When you read that, you everywhere you see the word faith, you substitute it with Yahshua. Let's start at Hebrews 11 and 1. Okay, so I've got um, Hebrews okay. 11 and 1. Mm -hmm. I'm going to replace faith with the word Yahshua, correct? Right. Yes, please. All right. Now, Yahshua is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Stop. Now, we know when we talk about, and if you have the name chart, Yahshua is nothing but the Holy Spirit manifested in a physical body, correct? 
That's what he is. So we're talking about Yahshua is, is the evidence of things. Uh, read it again so I don't mess it up. Now, Yahshua is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The, the thing not seen is Yahweh Elohim. We don't see that. Remember, the moderator said you see that in visions and revelations. So Yahweh Elohim is what's not seen, but Yahshua, the Messiah, now the Holy Spirit manifested in a physical body is Yahshua. That's your evidence of Yahweh Elohim. So that's why he is the evidence of things not seen. Keep going. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. What, by it, by Yahweh Elohim, or the superincorporeal form of Yahweh, seen in visions and revelations, that's who gave them a good report. Because what is it? It's the Holy Spirit that gave it to them. Go ahead. Through Yahshua, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, why is that? Because it was through Yahshua we understand that the worlds were framed. Why is that? Because Yahweh Elohim, remember Yahweh in pure spirit form created Yahweh Elohim. Then he went out of the creation business and Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh in that form of Yahweh Elohim created all things. So he was the one that formed all the things of the world. He framed the world by the word of Yahweh, which is Yahweh Elohim. Elohim. Keep reading. For by Yahshua, Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Yahweh testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Mm -hmm. By Yahshua, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because Yahweh had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased Yahweh. But without Yahshua, it is impossible to please him. Stop. That's what I wanted to get. Now, see how that's so pretty, how you can substitute Yahshua? Because we all, you know, we've learned in this class that it's through Yahshua. Yahshua is the mediator. Yahshua is the one. Yahshua is the way you get to the Heavenly Father. So it's by Yahshua. But without Yahshua, it's impossible to please him. Who him? Yahweh. It's impossible to please him. So your faith is in Yahshua. Yahshua is faith. Yahshua is the thing that's seen that Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, my door kids keep opening the door. Um, Yahshua is the one that we look to. That's our faith. Our faith is Yahshua and Yahshua is our faith. So start that one over for me, Pam. Six, mm -hmm. but without Yahshua, it is impossible to please him. Yes. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you come to Yahweh, when you offer up those prayers within yourself to Yahweh, you better believe, you better believe that he can do it. You don't go to Yahweh with a doubting heart saying, well, you know, Yahweh, I know I'm in this death state, but you know, if you could get me out of it, you don't do that. You go, you know what, Yahweh, I know this is a death state, but I know there's a resurrection. How do you know that? Because your foundation is shored up. You've been shown time after time, evidence after evidence, proof after proof that Yahweh is who he says he is. And he brings you out of it every time. It's that repetition that builds up your faith and builds your foundation. So you're sure of that Yahweh is going to bring you out of this thing. Keep going, Pam. Okay, um, seven, mm -hmm. by Yahshua, Noah, being warned of Yahweh of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Now, is that what we're doing? We move by fear of Yahweh. And remember, yeah, uh, oh, I can't remember where the scripture is, Sherry, help me out, where it says, uh, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of, of knowledge, I think is how it says. So we move, when we're preaching this gospel, just like Noah was doing, Noah was building that ark. He was being moved by fear. What we're doing, we're preaching this gospel or we're building a spiritual ark for us to go into, which is Yahshua Messiah. That's, we're moving by fear, not fear, oh, I'm quaking and trembling, which you do with Yahweh, but it's fear of missing out, of not being with your heavenly father. That's the fear we're talking about. Keep going, because I know my time is short. 
prepared an ark to the saving of his house. What, the- what saving of what house? For us, that's our soul. That's the house we're talking about. We're not talking about a physical house. Keep going. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by Yahshua. Mm-hmm. Eight, by Yahshua, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went Mm -hmm. by yashua he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with isaac and jacob the heirs with him of the same promise Mm -hmm. for he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is elohim through yashua also sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Uh huh. So drop down to 32, Pam. Okay. 32. Mm-hmm. And what shall I more say? For the mm-hmm. time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and da- David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Who through Yahshua subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, Mm -hmm. quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Mm -hmm. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Mm -hmm. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, Mm -hmm. of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. That sounds like the brethren. When Dr. Kinley talked about when Yahweh brought us together, he took a bite out of crime. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. he brought us from all corners of the earth, all faiths, all religions, all races. He brought us out. And that's what, yeah, that's what that's saying. You know, they wandered in deserts and in mountains. What desert? A desert of not hearing the word of Yahweh, a desert of being out there in Babylon, listening to all that crap, all that corruption that's out in the world. Yahweh brought us out of that. But he did it by faith. Go ahead. Or Yahshua. Mm-hmm. And these all, having obtained a good report through Yahshua, mm-hmm. received not the promise. Mm-hmm. Yahweh having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So what that's saying is even though they've taken off the flesh, they will now, we are all going to go into glorification together. None of us. None of us are going in without anyone else. We're all going together like those. Remember those, everyone that got that penny for their labor, we're all going to get the same thing. And what is that? That's immortal glorification and glorious and righteousness in Yahshua the Messiah. So keep on, fight the good fight. It's, it's, It's laborious. Sometimes you get tired, but it's is a reward for it, a reward that money can't buy, that the world cannot see. We have this. No one else in the world has what we have. You can't pay for what we have. And there's nothing we did. There's nothing we didn't do to deserve it. It's all through the grace and mercy of Yahshua the Messiah from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. So let your faith be stronger than your fear. Always so that Yahweh has this thing on lock. There's nothing that's outside of him. So just remember that. And trust me, I I love listening to you all. I love, and Joel knows, I love the scientific aspect of everything that has to do with this teaching, but it's all for the glorifying of the body of Yahshua. So we're all in it together. I love you all. I really do. And I thank you so much for hanging in there. Just, Just stay strong. Don't worry about that physical location. If it's Yahweh's will, he'll provide you a a different one and a better one. But if it's not his will, we're going to keep doing what we're doing now. And that's preaching this gospel until he takes us out of here. And with that, I'll say, if you got anything, you give all your honor and glory to Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much. That concludes our Sunday Zoom lecture. Um, We hold classes here on Zoom every Wednesday from 7 to 9 and every Sunday from 11 to 1. So let's all please stand and be dismissed with the doxology. 
taken from the last couple of verses in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Have a great day.